This video will cover five ways to boost FPS, fix stutters and fix input lag by optimizing your Fortnite and PC settings. We'll also cover how to enable a stretch resolution if you want one and how to clear your Fortnite and GPU cache to fix any Fortnite crashes or FPS drops. First, we're gonna cover in-game settings and you can decide between competitive and casual before moving on to some Windows optimizations. So step one is to turn down our settings and graphics to maximize our FPS and visibility. But before we enable performance mode, if you have this option to enable NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency, I like having this on On Plus Boost. And once you've enabled that, feel free to enable performance mode and restart your game. Now, once performance mode is turned on, set your view distance to epic and meshes to low. Textures could be anywhere from low to high, but lower means more FPS. I like to have it set to medium. So these settings and performance mode in general will give you the highest FPS, lowest input lag, and the best visibility. If you're not interested in comp settings and are looking to balance the best graphics and high FPS, then you'd want to go for the best DirectX 11 or 12 settings your PC can handle, which would usually be something like this. Start with everything on low and then bump your view distance to high or epic as you prefer and your textures to medium, then test your FPS. Out of all these settings, the biggest FPS killers are shadows, global illumination and reflections. You might want to leave these turned off or at the bare minimum, have shadows on low. As for anti-aliasing and super resolution, I would recommend using something like DLSS on balanced if it helps your frames. But I find that having mine on TAA gives me more frames. Now moving on to sound settings. Make sure you have the sound quality on high and enable 3D headphones so you can tell where players are coming from with better accuracy. Even better is having visualized sound effects turned on. Now let's move on to some Windows optimizations. Next thing you can try is changing up some Windows settings to optimize the game. Make sure game bar is turned off. It's completely useless and a huge waste of your PC's resources. Same thing goes for game captures if you have that turned on. You can have game mode turned on because having background processes turned off will only free up your PC for your game. Next, go into this graphics tab. And here, let's add Fortnite into this list if it isn't there already. First locate where your Fortnite game is installed. Then navigate through it like I do here until you find this Fortnite client EXE. Double click on it to add it and then click on options and select high performance. This basically guarantees your GPU will be prioritized and used when running the game. I'm also sure most of you would have Discord running in the background or on another screen. Something you can try is turning off hardware acceleration in Discord and even in any other programs that you might have running in the background like your browser or Spotify. The next optimization you can try is going into the Epic Games Launcher and into Fortnite's installation options. Here you can choose to pre-download streamed assets. This will reduce the load on your bandwidth and needing to stream anything. Also make sure your high resolution textures are turned off since it could be taxing on your GPU and dropping frames. Now there's one more important optimization to make. Click on the three dots next to Fortnite and click on manage and then click on this button to open up your Fortnite game folder and navigate through it till you find this EXE that ends with shipping. Go into its properties and then click on the compatibility tab. Enable compatibility mode and set it to Windows 8. Also turn on disable full screen optimizations. Now click on apply and OK. This next part of the video are three simple things you can do to reduce your process count on Windows in order to lower your input lag. So, the first thing you can try is pressing on Windows and R to open up the run window and then type in services.msc. These are a list of all the services that run on your PC, including background processes. Automatic services run at startup and typically always run in the background, while manual services activate only when triggered by you or when an app runs. So we need to focus on disabling the automatic services that are completely useless to us, like connected user experiences, which is just a bloat process from Windows. You can disable a service by right clicking on one of them and opening its properties. Here you'll see this startup type setting. Change it from automatic to disabled. There's also processes like maps downloaders, which you can disable, or Windows Insider services, which is basically like Windows beta testing for new features. Assuming you aren't signed up for getting the beta updates of Windows, you could disable this one too. 
and printer spooler, which is a printer related service. You can disable this if you don't use a printer. There's a lot more non-essential services that can be disabled, but research carefully and disable only those you're sure your PC doesn't need. The next most important thing is making sure your PC doesn't look like this. We can manually turn off anything that might run in the background and disable startup apps. Here's how you do it. Go into your Windows settings and into the Apps section. Here you'll need to go through all your installed apps and manually disable them from running in the background. And you do this by selecting Never under Letting This App Run in the Background. Repeat this for every non-essential apps like most of the Windows bloatware. Next, right-click on the taskbar and open up the task manager. Then click on Startup Apps. Here you can see everything that starts up with your PC and the impact it has on the startup. You can sort everything from highest to lowest impact and now feel free to disable anything that is non-essential. This is basically stopping apps from opening up and running in the background without you even knowing about it. At this point, if you're still facing FPS drops or stutters, these next two steps might help you, but I only recommend doing this if you really need to. To start with, press the Windows key plus R to bring up this search box, and then type in percent local app data percent, then press enter. Now scroll down until you find Fortnite game. This folder is basically Fortnite's cache folder. And in my case, I have 1.7 gigs of pretty much useless data. Go ahead and delete it. If you don't feel comfortable deleting this, you could also just rename the folder so you could revert it back if you want to. The next thing you could try is deleting the NVIDIA shader cache. And this is something recommended by Epic themselves if you find you're not getting the maximum performance out of DirectX 12. Now do the same thing as before to get into your app data folder, but this time navigate back and into the local low folder. Here you'll find a folder called NVIDIA. Keep navigating inside it till you end up here. Now go ahead and select and delete all these files. As you can see, I had almost four gigs of cache data here. And if you get this pop-up mentioning, a file is in use. Just allow it to skip over those files. Now that our major optimizations are done, here's a simple guide on how to enable a stretched res for Fortnite. To begin, search up and open the NVIDIA control panel, or the AMD equivalent of it if that's what you have. The final process is going to be the same for both GPU types. Now go under Change Resolution and then click on Customize. Now enable this, and then create a custom resolution. Now you can type in any stretched resolution you want here. I'm going to do 1440 by 1080. Also make sure you have your maximum refresh rate of your monitor set over here. Sometimes it might default to 60, so watch out for that. Now once you've done that, click on Test, and then press Yes to apply the changes. Now make sure your custom resolution is enabled here, and click on OK. Now right here where you can select your resolutions, scroll all the way up and you'll see your new custom resolution. Select it and click on Apply. Now when you're in Fortnite, select Windowed Full Screen and click on Apply. And now your new stretched resolution should have applied. Does Fortnite keep crashing but you can't figure out why? This next part of the video are five methods to try and fix that. Before we try out any major fixes, first try verifying your files. It might be that some missing or corrupted files keep crashing your game. Now let's move on to some more specific fixes. Open up your Fortnite game folder and navigate through it till you find this EXE that ends with shipping. Go into its properties and then click on the compatibility tab. Enable compatibility mode and set it to Windows 8. Also turn on disable full screen optimizations. Now click on Apply and OK. Let's also clear up our Epic Games Launcher cache and Windows cache, which can sometimes cause issues. Exit Epic Games if it's still running. And then, let's go back into the local app data folder. In here, find the Epic Games Launcher folder. Then go into Saved and delete this folder called Web Cache. Open up the search box and type in percent. Temp percent and go ahead and delete everything here and skip over anything that it can't delete and finally make sure your graphic drivers are all up to date 